So we are doing another trip. This time we are going to be doing the Pictish Trail and we are doing it on the tandem as you can see here. So the tandem, in here I've got some cooking stuff, in there I've got my tools, a pannier for Rachel, so clothes and sleeping stuff in there, sleeping bag and everything, a pannier for myself, a few clothes and sleeping stuff in there for me, and in here is just the tent and the stove. I know it looks a lot, but we can't really get it any lower than this. This front bit's gonna have my camera and a few personal items, but that's it. So the Pictish Trail starts at Dunnit Head. Dunnit Head is the most northerly point of mainland Scotland. Some people think of John O'Groats, but John O'Groats is the most northeasterly part of mainland Scotland. And you may have heard of Cape Rath, which is the most westerly, northwesterly part of mainland Scotland but Dunnehead is the most northerly place of mainland Scotland and that's where we are starting from on the Pictish Trail. We are at Dunnit Head and uh, over there is the lighthouse. This is the most north you can go on mainland Scotland, United Kingdom. It's absolutely lovely. We've had um, beautiful views getting here. We've seen deer, you've seen stag, mm -hmm. Rachel the train. Saw two stag. I didn't see them. I did want to get the drone out but there's quite a few people around and uh, I don't want to disturb their peace. So um, we'll save that for when we get a bit more remote. So you can't really see them on the GoPro but you can see the bigger one there. But all those little islands there as well, all those are the Orkney Islands. So when did you find these ones then? Uh, yesterday the one on the map, the other ones have been here four weeks or more. So that's the charity if you want to donate. Beautiful eyes. This morning we have seen seals. Um, they were just in that shed there being rescued by this charity we'll put uh, some details about that in case you want to donate which we are going to set up and yeah just been speaking to the owners been lovely um, woke up and saw a man in a kilt going to a reunion so it's been an interesting morning so far <laughs> so um yeah here we go so we are just on our way to Thurso and uh, we came across this beautiful place People out there having a wild swim. So we've just left Thurso just to pick up some stuff for breakfast and lunch and tea and um, on this lovely road bit grey above us at the moment but there's blue sky where we're heading and um, it's a bit of road for the next 20-ish miles and then we should hopefully get be getting to some uh, forest tracks um, and then we're planning on doing about 50-ish miles each day and then we should be on target to get to Edinburgh in nine days so as requested, the sun has come out and it's quite warm. It's warm, isn't it? Yeah, it's yes, it's lovely. Beautiful. Lovely road, quiet. If you haven't done any um, cycling in this neck of the woods, 
So right at the top of mainland Scotland, it's absolutely glorious. Whenever we see a pile of logs, we always like to get a photograph of our bike up against them. So we're just stopping here and I will be taking a photograph of my bike here. What do you think of the route so far, Rachel? In your words, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. Just stopping for a bite to eat at this lovely spot here, a bit of a cemetery there. there. And uh, look at that. What's for lunch, Rachel? Uh, wraps with mixed leaves. <laughs> mixed leaves and Edam. <laughs> Just found out this morning that we we knew we were the highest point um, in mainland UK, Scotland. But we found out that we were at the same latitude as Stavanger, see Stavanger in Norway, and I can't remember the name of the place in Alaska, but we're actually f further north than um, Moscow. And we can't believe how chuffing warm is it, Rachel? Very warm. So we've, we've just come back from Tuscany, and uh, I'd probably say it's just as warm as what we've had it down there. It's scorchy, absolutely glorious. Glorious day. I can't get over how beautiful this start of the ride has been. So we're leaving this road now and you might be able to just see up there the path that's going up through those trees. And that's where we're going. It's absolutely gorgeous. And now we are off-roading! Well that was the first test of what the tandem can do, a very steep uphill, off-road and first gear and we cruised up didn't we Rachel? We did! Yep, no pushing required, just cruise it out or as uh, teenagers might say, just firm it out. So we've just found a little shady spot under this tree and don't look steep, but we've just pulled up all the way from down there, in the right round corner, and onwards up there towards the tree line. But I don't know if you can see the sweat, it is scotchio, it is absolutely blazing hot, honestly. I didn't expect it to be this warm. No. Did you? Don't. Well, we thought at least we might be uh, colder than Italy, but I've packed for Scotland. But really, I should have packed for Tuscany. Can't explain to you how unbelievable this is. This is, this is what uh, I want from cycle touring, and we have experienced this in Wisenberg. You know, when we did the uh, the tour around the forests, the black forests are near there, and this is up there. This is absolutely glorious. It's, it's baking hot. Forest gravel roads. Don't get better than this. The top of the first gravel climb of the uh, trail. Absolutely amazing. So look at that blue sky, it's absolutely roasting today and in the forest there we were shaded from the breeze and it was sweaty, I was drenched but now we're at the top here and there's a beautiful breeze, oh. feels amazing and 
all we've got to do now for our quarter for today is we've reached the top so we've got to follow this for about 10 mile get that 10 mile done and we can decide if we want to stop then and put up a tent or do a bit more but we will be camping somewhere up here gonna see if we can have a dip in this mountain lake in the bifters but you're not seeing the lower bit Woo! don't know how low it went then but uh... <laughs> Well, the Pictish Trail day one, we've set our target to do 50 mile a day at least, and then we should get it done in nine days, get to Edinburgh in time. And um, day one's been lovely. We woke up this morning and we had a breakfast and the people that had the campsite slash uh, bed and breakfast, they also rescued seals. So we had a look at um, at the seals that they just rescued. They had three little puppies in there. One of them had only been in there, I think, just a day or so. And the others had been in about four, four weeks, I think. And um, if you want to uh, donate to those, I've got the details in the, uh, in the description. But yeah, they were lovely. And um, we chatted to a guy in a fancy kilt and he was going to a reunion. And the weather's been like this absolutely glorious all day long really hot really warm and we've moved on to some gravel forest roads which have just been absolutely stunning and now we are camping next to this lake our tents there the beautiful lake is there And we've had our tea. I've put the drone up. I'm absolutely rubbish with the drone though, so I'm hoping that I get better. I always have it on auto, and I know you're not meant to have it on auto, but um, I need to have some more lessons with that. But yeah, lovely, lovely day. Can't get better than this, can it? So it's ten past six. At about four o'clock I was thinking I could hear the rumblings of 
of thunder, but it was going on for quite a while, so I thought, no, that can't be thunder. But then, a little bit ago, it was thunder. And I did the counting thing, the lightning, and then the, um, the counting, and it was about 13. Then it got down to three. And the last one, counted seven. So it's now 10 past six. And as soon as we get a break in the rain, I think it must be packing up time then. And hopefully there'll still be a bit of a breeze to keep midges away because last night we got in our tent just in time because the, s the sky went black with midges. Some of them did find the way in here, but yeah. We were lucky because you could just you could hear them. It sounded like rain outside. It's pitter patter on the uh, on the tent. There were that many. So this is the calm after the storm. Got some blue sky again. There's this low cloud just rolling in. Day two. Quart to 11 and it's Scotchio again. Scotchio. Bra 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 Look at this for a breakfast spot Rachel's just gonna get our coffee on going now aren't you? Little cannons up there, on either side. In case you're wondering how heavy this rig is, I'm going to show you. Front end lift. <laughs> Can I pick it all up? See where my back goes? No. Yeah, all up. Absolutely beautiful. I can't say stunning no more, Rachel tells me off. So beautiful.
Look at them cuties. I think some uh, whale has died here. Look, he's got bones there, stretching all the way over there. Wow. They are massive. So we've just pulled off the A9 and we are at this single track road. Right on the coast. Absolutely lovely, but I did want to say that the um, A9, it is a fast road, but the drivers have been nothing but perfect. So hundreds of cars must have come past and I can only think of two that we just thought, oh, that were a bit close. Would you agree, Rachel? Yeah. Have gone on the other side, they? Yeah, they've gone fully onto the other side of the road. They've been absolutely brilliant. So, big shout out to A9 drivers. Woo! We just left Fares, Fares, and uh, we stopped in a hotel last night because we emptied our bags, checked through them, and we sent some stuff home to the uh, via the post office, and we sent back 10 kilograms worth of stuff. We thought we'd best do that just so we can get over these hills that we've got to go through in the Cairngorms a bit easier. But yeah, 10 kilograms, so the weight of a bicycle has gone back um, 13 pounds something to send it back, so not too bad. I think it was a good call. So we stripped it right back, we got rid of the stove, and I only have the set of clothes that I'm wearing, waterproof and a puffer jacket, and uh, one extra pair of socks and undies. Uh, have you have you stripped back? Similar, yeah. Similar. Uh, so um, that's got some food, but just a bit of food now, aren't we? And yep. just cold food. So we've realised that we have just been eating cold food anyway, so because it's just so warm as well. It's uh, really warm. It's only twenty past nine in the morning, and it's scotchy already. It's just been like this every day, but then there is the chance of a sneaky little thunderstorm in the afternoon, but we've managed to avoid those so far. Um, but yeah, going great. Um, so this is the route coming out of Fors or Fares, whatever it's called. And um, yeah, I feel good about that decision. Uh, to get rid of the weight because it does get a little bit hilly. Rachel now thinks she's a pilot of the tandem. Another way. Oh, he sees too high. <laughs> mm -hmm. I forgot about your seat being a lot higher. Jeez, that was a light. Did you get thunder then? Yeah. That was thunder over there. <sighs> <Whoa>. <laughs> 
He's off. Just uh, stopped here because look at all this beautiful purple and pink heather. We keep on, we keep on striking it lucky. Um, this is the first time we've been caught out in the rain. It's still scorchy, but uh, yeah, it's raining. But we can't believe this. This is better facilities than if we would have stopped at a campsite or anywhere. But uh, which bike park are we at? We're at Bike Park um, Glenlivet. Bike Park Glenlivet. And um, it's all perfectly legit. We've seen the people. It says it's all closed though now, but it says you can uh, stop here and um, put your tent up. But we've got this facility here. Look at this. So we can chill out tonight in the shelter, put a tent up here, then move it onto the grass, and we're going to put us tent up on this beautiful soft grass here look so oh honestly this is better facilities than the campsite because they leave the toilets open so Rachel's just gone to the toilet as well so we can, we've got access to water the only problem is the cafe doesn't uh, open up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning but we're normally off before that but yeah we've uh, struck it lucky again in the middle of the pump track got the stuff drying there in the sun but yeah we've got all this facility to ourselves so we're about over 600 meters there's a Ski resort just there, not resort but centre. Um, yeah, going all right. Very, we're in the clouds today. Oh, there's the chalet, if that's what you want to call it. And we're just coming over the edge now to Aberdeenshire. So you just come down from up there, from out of those clouds. And if it was clear, we would have a magnificent view here. Just right down from them clouds over there. It was in the clouds. It was absolutely brilliant. There was a ski center right at the top. Um, just got one more to do. You won't be able to see it. It's just going over there somewhere. But that one there was it. Hello. Hi. But again, we know cameras don't do hills justice, but we're starting the second big climb of the day. So we've just packed up, got up at six o'clock to make sure that Fungo Road is done and dusted. So hopefully we can get on and meet our target. We set off at ten past seven this morning to give there was plenty of time to get over Fungal Road with the tandem. Uh, we're just making our way to the uh, to the route. Well, we're on the Pict Pictish Trail route now, but making his way to the off-road part, Fungal Road. Are you happy? Yep. We're happy. The hounds of the Baskervilles. So we've done. Done quite a bit of climbing so far, and we've got a lot more to go. Our route goes up there, probably double the height we're at now. We just come across this mountain buffet hunters type hut. It's not a buffet you can stop in though. But, uh, yep, 
That's where we've come up from. Been some good climbing. So we've just come up the forest tracks so that is similar to this that joins Fungal Road. So this is Fungal Road now and it carries on going up or drop down and then it goes up again. And uh, then we'll have done it, Rachel. Good, eh? And we've managed to ride all the way up. We only stopped to read a sign back there. Keeping good progress. Good progress, eh? Mm -hmm. So guys, our path goes up there. And that's in normal, I'll zoom in so you can see it. There we go, that's our path right up there into the mountains, into the clouds again. But off-road, on a tandem. <laughs> Look where we are. We think our route goes up that one. There's routes all over the place, so that's the original one I thought we were going up. But there's one going up over there. This is one big climb, right out over there and then some. This is a morning's effort is this, zigzagging around here. We're near the top now, it's a little bit further to go. And then we've done Fungal Road can fungal off. Imagine what you could see here if that cloud weren't there because those mountains just go up and over forever. Same there, look, you've got that ridge and then they're just going over. Absolutely amazing. We are so glad we decided to do this uh, because, you know, there's quite a few ways we could have got back to Edinburgh. But just being in the middle of nowhere, we haven't seen anyone. And you get all that pushing. But then it's all worth it. You know, the clouds are adding an air of, um, I don't know, what do you want to say? Just make it look, uh, what's the word? What are you trying to say? I don't know. <laughs> just, I don't know, just nice to look at. Uh, Picturesque, I don't know. But if they weren't there, then the views would be astounding. But it's nice as it is. It is what it is. Well, we made it to the top of Fungal Road. We're on our way down! So the descent, again, cameras don't do steepness justice. Coming down there, we're going all the way down there, but just look where we are if I spin around. It's absolutely beautiful. The purple heather, and some of it is so bright. Specks here that are even purple. It was worth the effort. So this place wasn't marked on any of the maps, but it's an independent museum showing how life was like in the Glen. 
and it's beautiful. Got a lovely cafe as well. Room set up as they would have been. And lots of artifacts around. This is uh, school life. So beautiful little independent museum, nice cafe, brilliant stop for when you've just finished the fungal road. You need to stop here and have a beautiful cake and coffee. Mm -hmm. No, we saw that big one coming up through the forest. Ooh, they look like comfy saddles. By the way, guys, in case you're wondering and thinking, I'm sure that bike had front panniers uh, when they set off. Yes, it did. So when we got to, what, what's it called? Forez, Fors, Forez. We went to the post office. We re-jigged our packing because we knew we were going to go so over some hills. We got rid of the front panniers and uh, cooking stuff. So we've just been eating cold, cold stuff. Um, no making his own coffee. Got rid of the stove, all that sort of stuff and we got rid of 10 kilograms and we were thankful for that 10 kilogram loss when we were pushing it up Fungal Road just then. So this is where we're camping tonight, while camping down on Luna Bay. Lovely, the sun's out. We've done Fungal Road today. We made it to the coast. Yeah. How about that? Check this out. Lunum Bay. We once went to a beach that was called Squeaky Sand Beach, or it was famous for having squeaky sand, and it was not as squeaky as this sand here. Now that's proper squeaky sand. So we've just left Lunan Bay, which was absolutely stunning. We're on our way now, 55 miles to the Pillars of Hercules, which is a vegetarian vegan farm shop we that has um, camping. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, we're camping. <laughs> We've camping, and but they also have a, a field and services for people that are travelling like us by bicycle under your own steam. Uh, so hikers, biker hiker really, and that's only six pound a person per night. We are really looking forward to that stop and that's our target for today. And that Pillars of Hercules is at a place called Falkland. We're just going through our broth. Rachel was looking forward to a smoky, but um, it's the wrong time of day. Just had breakfast. We are in the lift on the Tay Bridge and the tandem fits in nicely. Lots of room. And you're going to see where we're going to come out. Da -da -da -da. We 
we have just crossed the Tay Bridge. We've just come out through Dundee um, and uh, we're up on the hills of Fife. And it's beautiful up here as well. And we're on our way to, like, say, to this um, farm shop cafe slash camping that offer biker hikers camping for six pound and uh, that's where we're heading and hopefully we'll get there to treat ourselves for some food because we haven't um, bought any food this trip from say takeaways or anything like that we got oh, we got some chips on the first night uh, on our way to the digs in uh, Thoreau first so <laughs> and um yeah, so we're going to treat ourselves if we get there on time. Closed at six, so here's hoping. So we are just into Newburgh, the big climb up, and we will be at the Pillars of Hercules. Smashing day today. <laughs> Smashed out the 55 miles and we are now at the Pillars of Hercules. Look at that for a view over there. Lovely big hills right to the end. So we're only um, 30 mile-ish now from Edinburgh and this is just going to be my final uh, video. But um, I just wanted to stop and say what a beautiful and amazing trip it's been. I've really, really enjoyed it. It uh, feels a long time since I've had this feeling about a bike trip. Um, they all have a different feel to them, but this one has just really energised me. It's been absolutely brilliant. And you can see, you know, right towards the end, we've still got these views here. And on the other side of the road, we've got the rolling hills. Yeah, it's just been magnificent. The, uh, the, we're following the Pictish Trail and obviously sometimes we've dipped off the trail because there's no point in taking on a stretch of single track when you're on a tandem just to get the kicks of the downhills off-road but um, we've tried to stick mainly to it we've done a bit of the Sustrans routes as well to get round those bits but even the road sections have been absolutely lovely so we started right at the top at Dunnet Head the highest you can be on mainland uh, Scotland, mainland UK and um, made our way down, we did a bit of wild camping which was ace, um, beautiful scenery off-road we've gone through some beautiful villages we've had that big push to the top of the fungal road and then the beautiful descent down you know, in the middle of nowhere we didn't see anyone the people have been absolutely amazing the, everyone has just been so welcoming and so friendly. Absolutely love the Scottish people in the in the more rural places. Absolutely top notch, and um, I just really, really enjoyed enjoyed being on the bike round these round these views. And um, I'm gonna miss miss this. Gonna really, really miss it. It's gonna stick in my memory though for a long time. And um, absolutely love being on the tandem bike with Rachel. Going forward, that's how we're going to tour together. We have done it in the past. We, you know, we rode back from Spain with with Eva. But um, I think going forward, we'll get a roll off on a tandem, and then that'll be our main method because it's just been so nice just chatting away, going over these hills and feeling part of a team. 
and that's made the trip as well, I think, and I think that's why I've enjoyed it so much. Really, we can just chat away and, and take it all in. It's been brilliant. So, I hope you uh, come up to Scotland on a bicycle or a tandem and enjoy it the same way that we have. Thank you.